Alito. Welcome back, everybody. This is CT at the NYC Indian, where we are going to discuss today the 90 Day Fiance before the 90 Days. This is going to be coming from a native urban perspective. It's going to be coming from a mixed perspective and a secular perspective. So let's dive right on in. So we're going to start off today's episode with the fourth episode. I didn't start from the very beginning because I wasn't quite sure if I was going to do this or not, but I decided, hey, what the hell, why not? So we start off with, with Mike and Jimena, and they're at the airport, and they see each other for the first time. And she seems a little bit relieved, but... You know, I'm not really sure if she's like really feeling it. And he seems very happy to see her. Now, they both seem like nice people, but especially Mike, right? He lives with his father and his grandfather, and he seems like he comes from a very nice family. And Jimena, she has um, two beautiful little boys, and she expresses in the uh, confessional later on that he was a little bit more bajito than she thought he was going to be. So already we're seeing there's a little bit of a interruption in chemistry, shall we say, for the very first time. But anyway, off they go. They go and meet her family. And when he gets there, he's not expecting to see the whole family. They were all there, including mom, dad, stepmom. Um, the, there was another girl there. I don't know if that was her sister or not. And then the two little boys. So, you know, it seems to be that the main obstacle in their relationship is the language barrier. And she was asking him for, you know, little things that he want to do this or, or how he felt about that. And everything was, si, sí, si. Sí. <laughs> and te amo, you know, I love you. Te amo, te amo, te amo. Like every other answer was te amo. <laughs> Even he said it to the little boys, te amo. So um, this is going to be really difficult because she literally speaks no English. And... He knows a little bit of Spanish, but it's more difficult, I think, for understanding full conversations. And he's trying to use a language app to communicate with the family. And they're asking him, you know, some kind of basic questions you would ask a person when you're meeting them for the first time or whatever. But I don't know. Jimena's dad was like not feeling it at all. But, you know, one thing that the little boy expressed was like that, you know, oh, we like him. We like him more than her other boyfriends. So maybe it's, you know, he seems very, you know, he just has like that gentle. I mean, he reminds you of like, I don't know, like a hobbit or something. He just seems so, so gentle and kind. Like he just wants to do stuff for you. And he seems just so sweet. So, you know, I think the kids really, um, the, they really sort of like, I don't know, they can, you know, children can sense that kind of thing, right? So they took to him right away. But um, it's going to be a little bit difficult to kind of get some alone time when there's so many people there. And I don't know what the sleeping arrangements are going to be um, because. I don't know how many bedrooms are in that apartment, and quite frankly, her dad and her stepmom live there as well. So between that and the two boys and stuff like that, it's going to be an interesting night. So let's go to the next couple, which is going to be Alina and Caleb. Okay, Alina and Caleb are definitely an interesting couple, and they're interesting because they've known each other for 13 years, and they they they've had a friendship and uh, an online friendship I should say for 13 years. They never met in person until then, obviously. And um, when they meet at the airport, it seems like he's like a little bit apprehensive about her stature. He's he's saying like you know I don't know maybe I kind of didn't realize you know um, the differences in size and stuff like that. But Alina, I mean, she really knows what she wants. And, you know, she seems like a sweet girl. You know, she's obviously a very bright girl. And he, I'm still trying to get a read on Caleb. He's definitely kind of different. I mean, he is like more of your, he seems like kind of like a very open-minded kind of guy. But 
the fact that that's that what her roommate later described as that spark. Halito, welcome back everybody. This is CT at the NYC Indian, where we are going to discuss today the 90 day fiance before the 90 days. This is gonna be coming from a native urban perspective. It's gonna be coming from a mixed perspective and a secular perspective. So let's dive right on in. So now we're gonna go to our next couple, which is Alina and Caleb. So they wake up the next morning and Alina's, you know, she's feeling a little bit salty because her and Caleb didn't have any sort of uh, intimate time that she was anticipating having known him or, you know, in an online sense of knowing him for the past 13 years. She was really looking forward to that evening and the apprehension that he expressed, you know, in the confessional after the meet in the airport was very much one of like, oh, I didn't realize there was so much difference in our statures. So it's hard to know where Caleb is at right now, if he's like really feeling it or not. So they wake up together and, you know, he gives her some coffee and it's very nice and stuff like that. But she starts to express to him like how she felt about, you know, the fact that they didn't sleep together, the fact that they didn't kiss or anything. and. She definitely seemed let down, but he's saying, oh no, it's because I travel so from so far away and you know, I was tired and I just wanted to get some rest. And I listen, I've been on very long flights before, okay? You know, 12 hour flights, like and, and you can be really exhausted when you get there. But I don't know if you're gonna meet up at the airport, even if it's, you know, you. You know, even if it's a subtle, there's a little peck or, you know, just something small. I understand you want to get washed up and you're exhausted, but just something small to kind of, you know, let the other person know. And also because you're feeling that immediate chemistry that is sort of solidifying what you've built up over line, you've built up online over all these years, even though I understand that they both were dating other people during that time. So, I mean, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I just kind of, he's, it seems like there's a little, he's kind of gathering a little list right now in his head. Like, I don't know about this friend. I don't know if I can do the different stature situation. I'm feeling too pressure. I don't know. So then after that, they, um, he, um, then he brings up the backpack. That's what I wanted to talk about, the backpack. So when I saw the backpack, I was like, wait a minute i mean I, I don't it just seemed like if it were me i i, I don't know I, I don't think i would have liked that but you know i'm not in her situation i can't say exactly but you know you definitely heard uh people a shorter stature little people who say that they don't like to be picked up and things like that and that's what it kind of reminded me of but you know i wanted to hear what her opinion was on that i was very curious to hear that and um, even if he thinks he's doing something good was what I was thinking. But she expressed that, you know, other folks would get offended, but not her necessarily. She felt that that was like kind of a sweet gesture or something that he's, he's showing, you know, that he wants to be close to her and stuff like that because he is so active and he doesn't want to miss out on the action. But I'm like, you know, I understand, you know, making some sort of like um, um, adjustments so that you guys can do stuff together. But the fact of the matter is a lot of things that he does, I would imagine she may not be able to do. Um, that's just, you know, my assumption about that. Next up is Memphis and Hamza, and I am living every moment of my life for this okay it is so this is just like 90 fiance gold okay she's a woman of color she's a nurse practitioner she's a single mom of two children and she wants to marry a guy in tunisia 
who she's never met. And she says, you know, I'm not gonna rush into it. I'm not gonna marry him right away. I mean, we'll hang out for the first week. We'll, well I'll wait to the second week to get married. You know, please don't, you know, don't rush, don't, don't, don't take your time on our account. So anyway, when they meet together at the, um, they meet up at the airport, there seems to be an instant chemistry between the two. And then they decide to go to his house so his friend is driving the car and they're in the back seat and they're talking and you know she's like oh i can't wait to have our sexy time together and this is like really hilarious because this guy has had this woman fly all the way over the globe okay she's got a passport that is stamped for this man and has the an idea that she is going to be having this wild night together this you know great night with him only to find out that he lied and that no 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 they will not be sharing a room so <laughs> This is gonna be something else. And she is very adamant that if they do not have some sort of um, coming together of the minds, if you know what I'm saying, <laughs> be, that there will be no marriage. She definitely does not wanna enter into any kind of nuptials without having experienced each other's time together, let's say. So I say, oh God, this is gonna be a mess. So. That's Hamza and Memphis. Now the next couple is probably a couple that, I don't know, probably a lot of you ever actually are tuning into this season for, and that is Kim and Usman. Now, this is Usman's second time on this show because as we know before, who, for other people who watched the show previously, he is the first person, I, I would imagine, in 90 Day Fiance that's been on there twice because he was married with Lisa, or I don't know if they actually got married or they were just engaged, but they did the 90 Day Fiance process. Um, that I don't know, it was a couple of seasons back ago. And now we have Kim. Kim is a single mom. She lives in, in at home and or lives with her mother and she does a lot of uh, caregiving for her mother and she has a son who is her world and you know she's a huge fan of Usman's and decided to contact it, contact him through social media and you know speed up to now they're about to meet or they've met but they're about to have like their first kind of close time together so they're in Tanzania and where he's about to shoot a video and his management team is there and they are not really happy. They are just not feeling it, okay? They're looking at her like, come on now, are you serious? And they're looking at him like, are you trying to do this again? Now, they are trying to basically kind of control his image because they're part of his team and they're saying that or they're using that I believe as an excuse to say that you guys shouldn't show any you know PDA like just keep it cool you know and this woman she's put her entire heart and soul you see what a huge Michael Jackson fan she is like when she loves this woman loves hard and she really believes that Usman can be the one for her and can you know have this wonderful love and romance even though he told her that she could be a potential now as the team announces that he's going to have to go on a date with this woman rose ray um later on now kim is like what what's going on with this but then they're like oh but you knew this was a business you know meeting and or this was a business trip and we'd have business meetings and she's like yeah i know this is about business but you know i don't know i'm not i'm not really you know i'm not really comfortable with this so that is how they had their first like kind of sit down time together you know as a whole team let's say i guess she was like in on the team but the thing that got me was that you know um she had bought him all these gifts and you know, I, listen. I don't know how much money she makes or anything like that. I'm not in, and I don't know her financial situation. But the gifts were expensive, and I don't know if she's paying full price or whatever. That was like a really um, generous 
cornucopia of presents that he received from her. And his face really lit up and he's like, oh, I, I'm really thinking about her now. <laughs> and I'm like, listen, man, you know, you, <laughs> you cannot make this stuff up, I'm telling you. So he also expresses to his team that, you know, because the way that she presented him with all these gifts that he's like, you know, really starting to think about her more in a, in a way in the future. And like, he may want to be with her. This is, oh my God, <laughs> just don't know. All right. Next we have Johnny and Ella. Johnny is a divorcee who has full custody of his small child and he lives with his parents and Ella lives with her parents on their ranch in Idaho. So they both have anime and cosplay as their sort of bonding thing and you know that's just something they have in common. Um, so you know they've been doing their online romance and it seems to be very heavily interwoven into sort of uh, costume and um, role play around sort of, you know, Asian themed um, genres of different, you know, animation and, and, and I guess things like that. I don't know. Um, it, oh, I guess also martial arts, she's into that. So um, now I know she's been getting some flack lately about her fetishization um, of him. And, you know, I, I, I do want to say that I think that it's totally okay to have a preference. And I know that can be a controversial, that can be, um, you know, a not a very popular opinion. But I do think sometimes people just have their, you know, preferences and who they date. And, and, and I think that's okay, um, as long as you're seeing the person as a person. Um, what I get a little uh, iffy about with this situation is if they aren't kind of putting a little bit of that onto each other. You know, her being, you know, living this sort of, like he says, I'm a redneck cowboy. <laughs> and, you know, she's into, you know, the cosplay and stuff like that. So, um, I, I mean, there's a really healthy way to, to have those sort of outlets, you know, because as adults, sometimes, you know, just the nine to five can be a little bit grueling and you want to just uh, have a LARPing session. I don't know. Go to a renaissance fair. I mean, I'm a nerd. I do, you know, some kind of like nerdy stuff, too. But um, it just can get a little bit um, into a, an area where you, you want to make sure that um, you're not having any type of uh, expectation of this person solely based off of their ethnicity, particularly when it's an ethnicity that you just didn't have a lot of former um, access to or experience with. So then that kind of comes along with kind of creating ideas as well as, you know, what the media uh, has done, especially, you know, portraying Asian males and um, you know, maybe even what he's, you know, what has been uh, fed through, you know, media that he's consumed about, you know, American people as well. I don't know, but um, I, I want to see where this goes and exactly how he's going to be able to adjust living in an environment where she's at, which does not look diverse to me at all. But I mean, he seems like he probably doesn't really mind that. But um, once you strip down all that stuff, you know, it like, is she going to be okay if he decides to wear a tracksuit and some sneakers or if he, you know, like he just says, hey, you know, I've been here for so many years now and I just want to wear like a button up shirt and like some jogging pants. Is she going to be mad because he's not wearing more Chinese style clothing? I, you know, that's that's, you know, usually we're used to seeing the man kind of be like that when we're talking about, you know, topics of fetishization. Um, but you know, it can happen the other way around. But I, I just wanna say that it's okay, you know, to be with someone that people don't expect you to be with. My husband, if you see my husband, people would never expect us to be together because we come, our, our families come from different countries. But 
you know, you have to be respectful of their background and make sure you're not stepping into a territory that basically can just be kind of disrespectful. So that's just my little PSA about it, but we'll see so far. I kind of, I'm not gonna lie, I was cringing. I was like, oh no. It, like when I saw some of those scenes, but we'll see, we'll see what happens um, with them and, and you know, he's ready to come over and he's getting prepared. He, he's nervous about getting caught over here because of COVID. His friends are saying to him, like, you know, why don't you consider your job more? You're having growth in your career. You want to give all that up. But Johnny seems very determined to pursue this relationship with her. I just, I'm not understanding why he feels the need to try and get this woman to lose weight. So, I mean, you met her and she was a big girl. You come to America, you get married. Yeah, people can lose weight, but usually people get kind of comfortable in their marriages and <laughs> usually put on a few pounds. So, I mean, if anything, you know, marriage makes people gain weight, not lose it. So if he wanted someone that is American, that's a tall woman, you know, um, that lives on a ranch. There's actually quite a few here in the States. I mean, there's enough. He can find somebody instead of, you know, trying to get one who has those things. But it's like, oh, but she also has weight. Like he sees her weight as her baggage. So I don't think that's a good way to approach a relationship. It, it actually seems quite toxic to me, um, even though I understand he wants he's he comes from a culture where he's used to people being smaller. And we definitely have very different diets over here in the States. Um, you just going into a relationship trying to change a person right off the jump. I mean, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I don't understand that. And if she, now, if she is saying, hey, I want to lose this weight. And can you help me by like, um, you know, seeing if you, there's some kind of medication you can bring. That's different. But the way it seems as though I don't know, like, he's the one that's just initiating this. So, I mean, what the hell, Johnny? What's up with that? But we shall see. She seems really like she just loves him so much, she probably would do anything for him. I do not know exactly what is going to happen with this couple. But can I say, you know, next time 90 Day Fiance, when we're going to do like an Asian and non-Asian pairing, can we get something that's a little less you know, with the, you know, the sword play and all of that stuff. I mean, just that, that's, cause that's kind of, that creates like a stereotype. I, I, I don't know, I don't, I mean, it's not my place to really talk about, you know, a culture that I'm not from, but I, I can see like how that kind of looks. And, you know, I'm a person of color myself. It just sometimes looks kind of a little strange. And plus I'm a woman myself too. So I can relate on her side. Like I wouldn't want someone telling me Oh, I like you, but <laughs> if you like me, but then guess what? <laughs> I'll see you later, right? So we'll see. We'll see what happens. But um, I'm ah, uh, I'm I'm just I'm not sure about that couple. I'm not sure about them. <laughs> now we're over in Panama, where we have Gino and Jasmine, and they've just woken up, and oh, the birds are singing, and it's just so wonderful. And they have all this, you know, glow, and you know. They talk about how wonderful spending the night together was, and they sounded like they had a good time. And he's, you know, talking about how he didn't need his blue pill, and it was so wonderful and great. So I just feel like we need to screenshot this exact moment because I feel like we weren't, we're not going to see anything like this again with her being that happy. <laughs> okay? Because Jasmine looks like she don't play. <laughs> okay? So now they go shopping and they're looking, you know, like it looks like a tourist place or something. I don't know. They're looking at some knickknacks. And um, she then brings up his ex-wife and calls her stupid. Now, Gino, even after, you know, being on cloud nine, all of a sudden something went up like hm, stupid. Like, why you got to call her stupid? I mean, she's just my ex-wife. She didn't do anything wrong. Like, she's just my ex-wife. 
And then that's when Jasmine was like, look, you know how I feel. I don't want to go into a house and it's all decorated with other stuff from Brazil. And that is totally understandable. But we saw her with, you know, the, you know, the, the cop monitoring icon or, or emoji or whatever on the phone, like whenever he would go to the grocery, when he's back in Michigan, and he would go to the grocery store or whatever, and she would say like, you know, oh, I, I got to see who you're with and, you know, you got to, you know, put me on camera and stuff. This, mm -mm, no, this, this is going to be a nightmare. I'm talking like, I don't know, restraining or I, this is really giving me like vibes of like a person who is extremely possessive and controlling. And Gino, I mean, look, I mean, he's he's a middle-aged guy. I think he just wants to hurry up and have some kids or something like that. And, and you know, she's, well, she's in education, isn't she? She's some sort of instructor. I mean, she's intelligent. You know, she obviously takes very good care of herself. So she's like an ultimate package for him. But I don't think he really understands what he's about to get himself into. Okay, Alina and Caleb, they all along with Elijah, all three of them sit down together and they have a nice, uh, you know, little round of drinks and they're talking and Elijah really wants to get a sense of what Caleb is all about. That's his best friend. He's very protective of her. And I mean, quite frank, I, quite frankly, I think up until this point, he's doing a good job. You know, he's not, you know, treating Caleb you know, badly, but he's not rolling out the red carpet for him and he doesn't have to. I mean, I can understand, you know, Caleb feels like, you know, it's a third wheel situation or something like that. But I mean, her family wants to make sure that she's safe. She's smaller stature. So like her mom says, people may push her over. She needs help walking and things like that. Or, 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 she can't walk for a very long period. She needs help with a wheelchair. So there's a lot of things that come along with loving her and it's all part of the package. And Elijah wants to make sure that Caleb is ready for that. But Kate, but, but Elijah is like, I don't think he's really feeling it because he doesn't like the fact that Caleb is not, he didn't really show that affection from the beginning. He wants to know, Elijah wants to know like how the first night was. And Elijah, I'm, I'm with Elijah, like not even like a little kid, like nothing. I mean, I know you're tired, but you could have just brushed your teeth and had like a little kiss or something like that. So Caleb doesn't like it because he feels like Elijah is kind of grilling him. But, you know, he knew that's what he was there for. So, I mean, She's got people behind her that love her. I mean, she's lucky she has somebody that can travel with her like that. So that's, that's Caleb and Alina. Okay, so now we have Ella and she's about to do a video call with Johnny and um, she decides to share with us her Naruto style wig and you know sort of you know fantasy with that and I um I really didn't need to see that but I think this gives us a window into sort of I guess the sexual chemistry which involves some uh you know costume play and things like that I mean hey whatever you know whatever floats your boat but I just feel that the costume play is so ethnic in nature in some ways. I mean, I don't know. It's just, it really, I'm, I'm almost uncomfortable talking about it. I just, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But he seems to be in it. He's like, oh, I love your hair. Oh, that's so beautiful. You look so beautiful like that. Oh, it looks so good. And I'm like... Well, I mean, I, I guess, you know, I thought she looked fine with her natural hair. It looked beautiful to me, just her own natural hair, you know, little makeup, something like that. But girlfriend was sweating in that wig. Oh God, I just, I can't, I just can't, I can't, I can't. But okay, so we're gonna move on. 
All right, so next we have Usman and Kim. So they are together at this restaurant with this sort of leafy background, all these tall leaves and you know plants and things, and I thought it was kind of cool. And um, also cool too that we get to see some African countries, you know, on TV that we never get to see, you know, um, like on a reality show or anything. So I thought that was kind of interesting. And then here comes Miss Rose Ray. I don't know if it's Rosa Ray or Rose Ray, but you know, she's a Tanzanian um, performer and she's absolutely gorgeous. And she's sitting down at the table and Usman is looking at her and Kim is looking at her and Kim's thinking like, oh my God, this woman is absolutely stunning. Like, <laughs> what am I doing here? So as Rose Ray starts asking Kim these different questions um, about herself and how they met and everything like that, um, she gives Kim a little hope like, oh, maybe you guys, you know, hit it off or something like that or, you know, and here comes Usman. He says, oh yeah, and you know, things go well, we're gonna get married. And Kim's like, you know, you could see like, she's like, oh, married? Like, you know, probably something that she really would love to hear, but at the same time, she seemed a little shocked <laughs> because the guy wouldn't spend the same night with her in the hotel room on the first night. He hasn't showed her any kind of physical affection that we've seen on camera so far either. Now, I know some of these guys will be like, oh, I'm Muslim, so you know, I can't, you know, we, we're not allowed to do that, you know, before marriage or if my mom were to find out or something like that. I, I, I think a little bit of that <laughs> is kind of reminding me of like Muhammad and, and Danielle. I, I mean, <laughs> I don't know, you know, so her face, you know, like she has, you can see she has like two different emotions. It looks like she has two different emotions going on, but she's definitely shocked, like, huh? So um, I think that is the biggest sign that you need to be looking out for what he's saying to you. Because the man doesn't show you affection. He calls you a potential. He doesn't really seem that into you. Like, I know sometimes, especially as women, we, we really want love, we want to be loved, but, you know, it has to make sense. And, you know, between the age difference and the distance and the different uh, religious upbringings, I mean, to me, it's just, like, I don't know, I just, I feel so bad for her because you can tell she really wants this, but you know, it would just be so much better if it was like with someone that was like a local person, you know, cause this is gonna go, she's a single mom. It costs a lot of money to do all this stuff. And uh, I don't know. Now, Alina and Caleb finally do say goodnight to Elijah. And I guess he feels safe enough to leave her alone with him. And, you know, they decide to go back to the hotel and he carries her and picks her up and takes her up the stairs and they get into the room and boom, right away, he starts kissing her and they start making out and we're like, oh, <laughs> and it was a little more than I thought they were going to show, but yeah, they were, you know, they were definitely, you know, into something. So I am definitely curious to see what his reaction is going to be on the next episode. How far did they take things? Do you guys think, think do you think they went all the way? I mean, it was looking like, you know, it could have been headed in that direction. All right. So all right, we'll see that for next episode. So the last couple that I want to talk about is Hamza and Memphis. And oh my God, this is where 90 Day pays off, okay? She meets the mom and the sister. It's a warm reception. It seems to be going well. The mom is still a little bit, you know, reserving her trust, but it's understandable. You know, Memphis is a stranger to her. They explain the sleeping arrangements. 
And then after mom and sister go to bed, Hamza goes into the room with Memphis and then they start talking about how they're going to have their intimate time. So Hamza is just like, oh no, we don't, you know, we can just have intimacy here. It's like, Hamza, what are you talking about? And Memphis is like, no, let's just get a hotel. I don't want to disrespect your family. You know, she's like all about, you know, trying to keep it above, the, all above board, you know, be respectful and everything. <laughs> the next thing you know, honey, they pan to the sun coming up. <laughs> the only thing was missing was like a rooster or something. They had this warm morning glow on their faces. And oh my God, it looks like they got it in during the night. Now, I don't know, you know, they do little, they play little tricks on us sometimes with production, but it really looked like they were together that night. And Hamza's mom went to the door to wake up Memphis and Memphis comes out of the door <laughs> kind of like almost with like a you know you know her head was down and she looked shocked <laughs> when her mom <laughs> when his mom was at the door and it was almost like you know like oh <gasps> like oh my god like she had been caught like red-handed on national television <laughs> and then <laughs> and then Hamza's mom goes you know, I think she was speaking French. She's like, ça va? And he's like, oh, yeah, ça va. It's okay. It's okay. And when she left that kitchen, I mean, she left the hallway and went into the kitchen, the look on his mother's face was that look that parents have when they know that their kids are no longer virgins. I mean, that was the look. It was like a sheer, like, oh, my God, what has happened under my roof? Now, I was wondering like, okay, now how is this going to work? Because this is Tunisia, okay? This is an Islamic country. There are very different rules and very different consequences for breaking said rules over there, all right? So I just don't know enough about their legal system to know, you know, details. But I mean, is that going to get Memphis in trouble? Can that get Hamza's mom in trouble because she's on television? Can that get Hamza in trouble? You know, if something did happen, we still don't know. But damn, it really looked like something happened. So, um, Memphis girl, I hope it didn't go down that night. I hope that that was some little you know, a little game with production and that you guys really did decide to go get a hotel somewhere. But then again, I don't know, can they even do a hotel? I mean, cause wasn't that an issue with that girl? Um, I don't remember her name, but Aslan was the boyfriend. Were they in Morocco or was that Tunisia? I think he was in Morocco. You guys leave in the comments below. I'm not sure which country that was, but wasn't there some issue about them not being able to get um, a hotel room? Um, as single, like as non-married people, as you know, coupled up, getting one room together. I feel like that happened with Aslan, or maybe it was with a different couple um, in a previous season. So I don't even know if the hotel situation was necessarily an option either, but why did he lie from the beginning? And why didn't he just say to her, listen, if you wanna get married, there's very little chance that we're gonna have any place to be intimate before the wedding. Just say it before she gets her passport stamped and crosses an ocean for that. And, and I mean, oh my God. I'm just hoping next week's episode, we are not gonna have an international incident like locked up abroad or something like that. So either way, well, let's talk about it together. If you have any things that you want to say, please leave your comments down below. We will see how the madness ensues next week, and we will talk to you then. Have a good night, everybody. Chippy Salacho.